The next visualization we have is for supply. You are the inheritors of God's kingdom. God sent his son into the world that we might have eternal life. And that son said, I am come that all might have life and that more abundantly. Not just a meager subsistence level, but abundance is the inheritance we have to decree for. Now, why don't we have abundance? Records of fear and doubt. The belief that we don't deserve it, guilt. The violet flame gets to the core of our personal and national psychology. Then we solve the problems of the farmers and the workers and the manipulation of the money system and the economy. Start with yourself right here. So we affirm the green light coming down is precipitation, the fifth ray of science, health, healing, supply. So violet and green work together in this. Then comes the visualization of gold. Not that we're so much concerned with money, but money is a medium of exchange. And gold is seen as precipitated sunlight, alpha and omega, the symbols of gold and silver. So that is how we visualize supply, because paper isn't worth anything. So what are you going to visualize? You're going to visualize the real wealth of God's kingdom, which is this is a symbol of. So we say for supply, I am free from fear and doubt, casting want and misery out, knowing now all good supply ever comes from realms on high. I am the hands of God's own fortune, flooding forth the treasures of light, now receiving full abundance to supply each need of life. It's a wonderful little decree. We know our supply comes from God, but we demand that the earthly domain reflect and be the instrument of the proper distribution of that supply. Starts with the decree. Want to give it one more time? Everybody needs a little supply. I am free from fear and doubt, casting want and misery out, knowing now all good supply ever comes from realms on high. I am the hand of God's own fortune, flooding forth the treasures of life, now receiving full abundance to supply each need of life. You can give the heart, head, and hand decrees in the shower in the morning, visualizing God's shower coming down upon you. Here you visualize his perfection. Be ye therefore perfect. This is the sphere of the inner blueprint of your soul, your divine mission. Why were you born? What are you supposed to be doing? Did God create you to be on an economic treadmill, spending your whole life earning your daily bread? No. He expects you to fulfill a divine destiny that is far greater than maintaining the human form. What is it? We call it forth out of the great causal body above us. We ask for the blue sphere to descend, and we ask God to show us our mission, our inner blueprint, our divine plan, so we can get on with living it, because time is running out. The sands in the hourglass are falling, three score and ten. We're going to meet our maker one of these days. We never know when, and we want to be able to report to him that we have done on earth the assignment he gave us to do. And so... You see it descending, the blue flame with a violet. It's a wonderful action of the first ray of blue, the seventh ray of violet. Here you are standing in your aura in this beautiful blue sphere. And you say, I am life of God direction, blaze thy light of truth in me. Focus here all God's perfection from all discord set me free. Make and keep me anchored ever in the justice of thy plan. I am the presence of perfection, living the life of God in man. Now we go on to the transfiguration. Beloved Jesus, this is a painting of Jesus as the ascended master, Jesus Christ. Now this is the decree for the transfiguration. You'll find in the most recent copy of Heart Magazine, my story about the transfiguration as an initiation that Jesus meant for you and me to have. Transfigured, his robes were glistering white, and Peter, James, and John saw him. They saw him transfigured, and they also saw him talking with Moses and Elijah. What does that tell us? It tells us that in the exalted state of consciousness, we have the right to commune with the saints, the communion of the saints. Both Moses and Elijah were ascended masters at that point. Jesus was communing with the ascended masters of the Great White Brotherhood. What's the Great White Brotherhood? John saw them as the saints robed in white in the book of Revelation. Numberless numbers, 10,000 times 10,000 and many more thousands. All in heaven in white robes. 
That shows you that some souls have walked through this path and made it and returned to God. And the white robe is the purified aura. It has nothing to do with race. It's the brotherhood of those who have united with the white light and have remained with planet Earth as the saints to help us as their brothers and sisters. And first and foremost, we see our elder brother in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, he said we should be transfigured. The fact that his robe was glistering white shows that it transfigured physical matter, like the bush that burned, right? So that means your molecules, your cells, your atoms, your heart, your liver, your kidneys, your gallbladder, all of these should be transfigured and renewed. You should be recreated in the light. You combine that with prayer, fasting, herbs, and a temperate life, and you will find that God is glorified in you. Now this means you can just throw off the garments of a lower consciousness of sin and karma and put them into the flame, and that's what we say daily. It's a very exciting decree, and this is how it goes. I am changing all my garments, old ones, for the bright new day. With the sun of understanding, I am shining all the way. I am light within, without. I am light is all about. Fill me, free me, glorify me, seal me, heal me, purify me. Until transfigured they describe me. I am shining like the sun. I am shining like the sun. Each time you say that, you accelerate the light in you. You are different from before and after you've said it because of the light. I'm shining like the sun, S-O-N, the sun, S-U-N. Jesus is the son of God. He's the son of man. He's the S-U-N. He's the light in our world. He's the sun of manifestation. The S-U-N of all matter manifestation is the light of Christ in your heart. So it's the same word. That's the descending light of the sphere of the resurrection. You visualize your holy Christ self standing where you stand. One, you are united with the electronic presence of your Christ self, who is one with Jesus. And therefore, it is Jesus one with you in that Christ. You are in the sphere of the resurrection. You affirm the resurrection for your wholeness. You say, I am the flame of resurrection, which means God in me is the flame of resurrection where I am. I am that I am. Now the crystal clear river of life becomes qualified by our decree as the flame of resurrection. Now nobody can decree for you because it's your throat center, your chakras. So you are experimenters in the laboratory that God gave you, the laboratory of the four lower bodies. If you don't affirm God's word, you will never know if it works. So here we go. I am the flame of resurrection, blazing God's pure light through me. Now I am raising every atom from every shadow, I am free. I am the light of God's full presence, I am living ever free. Now the flame of life eternal rises up to victory. Now each one of these little decrees was a very unique initiation in the life of Jesus. The very first one's heart, head, and hand. The first day of his mission in Palestine, what did he do? Prodded by his mother, he went and changed the water into wine, alchemy. He used the violet flame. The water was not an acceptable offering at the marriage feast. What is the marriage feast? It's the marriage of your soul to the bridegroom who is Christ. And human marriage is intended to be dedicated to that purpose. This is why we marry, so that hand in hand together we might pursue the wedding to the bridegroom, Christ the Lord. And so Jesus, by doing this first, shows us the real purpose of his, his mission. What does he do to the water? We say he transmutes it in terms of chemistry. In terms of religion, he forgave the water. The water wasn't good enough. It had to be the wine of the Spirit. And you have to have that wine of the Spirit, the real blood of Christ flowing in your veins, not the water of human consciousness. Every one of these decrees is a very momentous episode in the life of Jesus. So here we have the transfiguration, the resurrection, and the ascension. Giving these decrees, you annihilate time and space. You affirm that right here and now I am fulfilling the law of my being, I am affirming I will pass every test. 
I will prepare to meet my God, and when these flames surround me, I will not be consumed by them, but I will be one with them, because before the day of the coming of the Lord, the notable day of the Lord, I have chosen to embody the light. So when God comes to me, I am ready because I contain the light. This is what it says, prepare to meet thy God. This is what John the Baptist said, bring forth fruits, meat for repentance. You've got to have the light come into you and be there when God calls you. It's your only safety, and that is the wedding garment. Weaving the seamless garment is the affirmation of the light. So here we affirm our ascension when God calls us back to his heart, never more to re-embody again because we have fulfilled our reason for being. You're supposed to accomplish that in this life because you've been doing it for thousands of years. And the end of the Piscean Age is the hour when the portals of heaven are open and through the violet flame we can return to God because the violet flame shortens the days for the elect and except the days be shortened no flesh should be saved that's Jesus prophecy the way the days are shortened is that they're accelerated the cycles are accelerated and we cast into the sacred fire daily the records of karma that go back thousands of years so now we affirm our ascension which in terms of time and space is in the future but in terms of infinity, it is now, because the only thing that exists is the eternal now. Isn't that the most liberating concept? It is just a grand acknowledgement that God is the I am that I am where I am. Jesus Christ is where I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Past, present, and future are dissolved. So we say, I am ascension light, victory flowing free, all of good, one at last for all eternity. I am light, all weights are gone, into the air I raise. To all I pour with full God power my wondrous song of praise. All hail, I am the living Christ, the ever-loving one. Ascended now with full God power, I am a blazing sun. This is the visualization for the ascension. The pyramid of life, you stand in the center. You command the threefold flame to rise from the base, which means your base chakra, the base of the spine, the white fire rises up through the seven planes of being. The threefold flame is formed. See how it's forming in a figure eight flow? In the center of the pyramid, signifying you have balanced the trinity in the etheric body, the mental body, the emotional body, and the physical body. There is the coil of light around you. It's called the electronic fire body or the deathless solar body, or in biblical terms, the wedding garment. It's a sheath of light. This is what you build when you pray. Prayer is never in vain. Scientific prayer is greatly enhancing ordinary prayer. Here is the pyramid. Now there is a coil of energy and fire the ascension flame has filled all of that temple of being.